What's up guys? Clay Westfall here, your local bass fishing expert in Central Texas. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, actually it's going to be two parts. First thing is going to be a fishing report from last night, which I'm going to call my September report. And then the second part is going to be kind of a review on um, kind of my decisions to this point. You know, I'm getting close to 30 here and uh, it's been a long road so far still following my dreams and still wanting to make something happen with fishing but anyhow uh, let's start with the fishing report and this is Canyon Lake uh, here in near New Braunfels, Texas uh, outside of San Antonio basically I started out the evening at 7 p.m. and really wasn't on fish to speak of except one or two maybe um, here and there and it was, it's just, it's just tough, you know, my local lake that I moved next to to guide, uh, Lake Dunlap here, which was an unbelievable lake, um, you know, the dam broke, and so I'm just left here trying to figure out how to scramble and make, make it happen, you know, I've got Canyon Lake, <clears throat> and then I've got uh, Lake Travis and Austin, which I have to travel for a while to get to, but, um, you know, nonetheless, it's just, got to work with what I have and uh, so it was it was tough it's been tough you know it's the middle of summer and best shot that I have is going out at night so you know I, I didn't um, I had this this trip scheduled for quite a while now so I didn't really have time to to uh, switch it up or, or make different accommodations but you know I said you know what I'm just gonna go all in let the cards fall as they may and just give it every single thing that I've got and it worked out. I mean, it, I definitely salvaged the trip. And really, a lot of the times, that's what makes the difference as a guide is salvaging your fishing trip. Um, it was pretty cool. You know, we, I ran a lot of offshore stuff. And, and, you know, you may sometimes run 30 spots and only catch them in two spots, you know. Um, as crazy as that might sound, it's just that way sometimes. So, you know, I started I started up in this region here, um, and even worked my way up into here. Uh, but basically, fished. I just followed the channel all the way, all the way, you know, until I got to the dam, fishing offshore points. And the points that I was fishing, um, you know, were all you know kind of on the edges here, where this channel comes in and, and touches on all these different points that are you know highlighted in various shades of blue, where the point intersects with the channel. Um, I just follow that edge graph, you know, and and I have a lot of, you know, brush piles marked as well as different stumps and rocks and whatever. So, um, but pretty much staying in that 25 foot zone, that was so key, um, but 25 next to like 40, that's really important. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I worked my way kind of across this point, you know, around the edge of it, um, this area here into this little channel bend here where you see these two little fish insignias. Um, I kind of fished around that area, you know, even worked my way over here, fished this, this long land formation that jets out this corner here. Um, you know, I was rotating spots. I would go and fish a spot, make five casts, pull up the trolling motor and leave, go fish another spot, five casts, trolling motor, leave, go back to the first spot. You know, I kept rotating at different times, trying different baits and, uh, you know, there's, as far as the baits, are concerned there's not a whole lot that I do um, you know with trying to have um, color wise I don't vary a lot I use dark colors you know but I'll vary the size of the bait how much water the bait displaces as far as the tail or the appendages or whatever but mainly just size you know if they're not really biting aggressively I'll scale down to like a smaller what they were biting last night was like a smaller craw um, and I don't think it's necessarily because they think it's a crawfish because it's pitch black. I think it's more just the appendages moving. They think it's a living thing down there. It's compact. It's an easy meal. Um, and so that was the deal. I was initially throwing that big lizard that I like to throw, whether it's the magnum lizard or the six inch, um, six inch lizard, um, and June bug is what I normally throw it. But, uh, but that small compact crawl in black and blue, that was really good. Um, three eighths ounce weight it was like 25 foot of water with with waves um, that's pretty much I try to use the lightest weight I can use to still maintain bottom contact but if you use too heavy it doesn't look natural when it moves 
the lighter the weight is, the more it kind of drifts around and looks natural. So, you know, like I said, I hit a few different points. Um, there's some brush over here that I fished off this corner. Um, broke, broke a couple fish off of actually, um, initially, um, he had snapped one off, uh, and you know, it was like, okay, good, good sign. I had a couple bites, but you know, it just, it was really tough. It, it got to the point where, you know, he was looking at me and, and he's like, man, I'm just out here to have a good time. And, you know, I just, you know, if we don't catch anything, I'm gonna have a great time. And for me, you know, I, I can't accept that. I've been doing this too long. I was 18 years old when I started doing this, um, taking people out, you know, and um, I'm not going to stop. And it, it is a social thing, and that's the beauty of guiding is to connect with people. But at the same time, I'm there to do my job. So I just, I just kept going, man. I just kept hitting these spots, rotating. You know, I worked my way from this side of the lake over to the dam and really near the dam it was pretty awesome because things started happening for me um you know really from about this this point and onwards to the right like this this section of the lake right here things started happening it took me a while it wasn't until about 10 p.m when things started happening 9 10 p.m but uh I don't know, you know, I was sitting in the truck um, before we started, and I was, you know, well, actually I was driving still, pulling up the ramp, and, you know, sometimes I just yell out loud and just, you know, kind of get get ready and get intense, and try to wake myself up, like, you know, it's game time, it's, it's freaking game time, let's go, let's do this, this is everything I've worked for, this is everything I am. You know, I just need to bring out the very best of myself in difficult times and make it happen, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just, I go crazy beforehand, like I'm going into battle, and it's beautiful. I was telling this guy last night, I think that the best of humanity comes out during times of adversity and difficulty and high pressure. And, uh, you know, famously RG3 said, no pressure, no diamonds, and that's the truth. So, you know, it's not for everybody. And that's kind of going to lead me to my next topic, um, which is, you know, fishing professionally and should you do it, um, whether that's fishing competitively or guiding. But yeah, some of these, this island here, this point here, um, before I move into that topic, these were good areas. Um, you know, I just, I've got a lot of brush marked around the perimeter of this, um, not necessarily on top like they have shown here, but really work the perimeter. People have dropped brush near the roadbed, and um, there's, there's a roadbed over here. Uh, see, there's a couple roads and stuff, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I just kind of fell into the thing. We started catching them. I noticed that that lizard wasn't hot, so I switched over to that small compact crawl, and it was like, just kind of maintaining contact barely, boom, 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 and then it hit it, set the hook, get him in the boat. It was pretty awesome, man. I felt I felt so proud when I got home and, um, you know, caught a good little handful of fish and just felt so proud of myself that I overcame adversity. You know, it's just, you can go in not having anything, and it's like, like I always say, it's just like magic. Make it happen. Pull the rabbit out of the hat. That's what drives me every day. But, uh, but yeah, to lead into my other topic, I teach this high school kid um, periodically, and he's a really good kid. His name's Tanner. And we go to Lake Travis, and we fish together, and, and I kind of go over everything with him, and we learn, and, and we just fish. You know, I'm kind of a mentor for him, I feel like, in his high school fishing career. And, you know, he said that he wants to be a professional fisherman, but uh, lately he's kind of changed his mind. And I think it's because of kind of the intensity that I've demonstrated and shown him, which not to scare him away, but it's, it's not an easy business. It's really, really hard. There's a lot involved, you know. Um, we went out and fished for like 13 and a half hours one night uh, from the evening prior to the next morning. And um, I just think he realized, man, this is another level. And it's not, it's not that it's abnormal. I think that the greats are at that level and there's a handful of the greats and if you want to be one of them and make the handful the little group of money that's up there um, that's a lot of money but just for the small select few you have to put in that effort obviously I'm not there yet um, 
you know, I'm sitting here, but, uh, man, where do I even start? You know, I've, I've kind of, um, definitely let my parents down at times. Um, it's cost a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of disappointment with my education. Um, here I am almost 30 years old working on and off for my dad doing construction, which is construction is a very noble trade and he's done very, very well and has created an awesome life for us, but it's not exactly what I had in mind for myself. Um, stuff so we'll see you know when I was living on my own in Waco guiding um, really didn't have anything I really was like hungry for days um, when I got cut my wounds didn't heal because um, of the hell I went through but uh, but I did all that to get better and to learn and um, it's paid off you know I have the knowledge now more than I've ever had um, yeah I just wasn't healthy I wasn't healthy I wasn't eating right I wasn't taking care of myself and uh, but I was just fully balls deep in fishing you know um, so that was quite a while ago but uh, Hoping I can make it work for myself at some point here and, and do something great for my family. That's my goal. And, you know, we'll see. So, hopefully I can move to a better lake and, and make it happen, you know. That's the goal. But anyway, don't want to leave on a negative note. It was a really positive evening. And, um, you know, worked my ass off for what I had. And, you know went through hell to craft a diamond and I'm so so proud of that so proud of that it's awesome I saved the trip so yeah that's it um, maybe seems a little dark towards the end here of this conversation but I just can't emphasize enough how difficult it is for people to uh, to make it doing this whether or not you live on a great lake or not you know obviously it's you put the odds tremendously in your favor if you do but uh, you got to make it happen with what you have and just never stop so that's kind of the moral of yesterday why I'm so proud of myself is because I just didn't stop just kept hitting spots rotating changing paying attention looking for you know environmental cues and it just happens it's a beautiful thing it's a really beautiful thing and I think generationally we've kind of lost that working towards an art like that and giving it everything so that's my report and that's my uh, two cents. Thanks.